this is map drawing two, the Nile River. You need to make sure your paper is going like this, portrait style, because it's going to be a long skinny drawing going down the middle. And you'll just need your pencil and your pen and your eraser. Start by making a little wavy line at the top. It just kind of goes up and down like that. This is going to be the coastline. Above here is the Mediterranean Sea and everything below here is the continent of Africa. Below the little wavy line, make sort of a V. Now, what we've created here is sort of a triangle and this is called a delta region. Now in the Greek alphabet, the letter D, delta, looks like this. And in English, we've kind of curved the D to look like that, but in Greece, they made their D like this. And so you can see why they would call this a delta region. A delta region is a place where a river flows down and breaks up into a lot of little tiny rivers. So you want to make a bunch of little wavy lines going out from the bottom of the V. The water is going to flow this way up here like this. When it gets to here, it's going to make a whole bunch of little streams running out into the sea. Okay, let's make the next part of the river here. It's going to be above the center line. If you kind of put your finger on the center of the paper and then go up a little bit and make a little mark for yourself, you don't want to go below this line with this first curve. We're going to make what I call a shallow S or a very slight S. Now let me demonstrate. A shallow S goes like this hardly waves at all. A curvy S goes like this. But a shallow S kind of just goes like that. And we're going to make a very shallow S from here to here. Like that. And on the second little hump, we're going to put a little bump right there. The next part of the Nile River is a narrow lake. It's only going to be about just like that, a, a little, about an inch long here. You're going to make a little squiggly, bumpy little lake. It kind of looks like an appendix if you've ever seen a photograph of your appendix. It's kind of this little wiggly, bumpy thing. Okay, now the next part of the Nile is going to be a curvy S. It's going to go down, up like that, be real curvy. And then when it gets to the bottom here, it's going to break up into tributaries. Just like that. Alrighty. I think we're ready to go over it in pen. Coastline. little narrow rivulets running into the sea. Shallow S, and don't forget to go over that little bump. A wiggly little lake. A big curvy S. And then when you get down to here, you don't have to trace over these exactly. If you don't like the shape of them, you can change your mind if you want. Now a couple of these are actually considered parts of the Nile. One of them is called the White Nile and one is called the Blue Nile. But we're just going to kind of just know that they go into little tributaries like that. Okay, and I think we're done with our pencil guidelines. We can just lift them right off. Next, let's put in some mountains. You know, down here there's tributaries, so there must be mountains that feed water into the tributaries. All the rainwater, perhaps some melted snow, runs off the mountains and goes into the tributaries. And these mountains over here are called 
the Ethiopian Highlands, E-T-H-I-O-P-I-A-N, and Highlands, it's one word, Highlands. So, of course, this corner down here is the country of Ethiopia. Let's label the lake. This is Lake Nasser, N-A-S-S-E-R. And we're going to put a dam at the top of the lake. You can just draw a little flat mark there, and it's called Aswan, A-S-W-A-N. Now, this dam is really important because you might have too much rain down here in the highlands and the water will come down this part of the Nile and if the dam wasn't there the water would keep going and this part of the river would get a lot larger and all the people that live along this part of the river would have their houses flooded and uh, there'd be great loss of life so this dam holds the water back and Lake Nasser can grow larger that's okay it doesn't hurt anybody and then the dam can let the water go just a little bit at a time. Alright, let's put a dot right below that bump there and label it Luxor, L-U-X-O-R. And this is a very popular tourist site. This is where you go if you want to see King Tut's tomb, the Valley of the Kings, all those buried mummies and everything. This is where you go. If you want to see the Great Pyramids, you go up here, right at the bottom of the V is the city of Cairo, C-A-I-R-O. And this is where you go to see the Great Pyramids of Giza. The other city we're going to label is at the top of the delta, right here. And that's the city of Alexandria. Named after Alexander the Great, and of course that's the place where the Great Library is. Now before we forget, let's label the Nile River. You can label it anywhere you want along here. I'm going to label it down here because there's lots of empty space. Don't forget to capitalize the R. And now I'm going to draw a line right at the bottom of Lake Nasser. Just draw a line across like this. It doesn't have to be perfectly straight. This is just tells me where the bottom of the country of Egypt is. I'm going to write Egypt above the line and I'm going to write Sudan below it. So the country of Egypt only has this much of the Nile River. A lot of the Nile is in Sudan. The other line I'm going to draw is right a little bit under the Aswan, kind of right above where I have the words like Nasser there. Right across the very top of the lake like that. And this is the Tropic of Cancer. Of course, that's named after the constellation Cancer the Crab. Now, if you want to add more things to your map, you can do that. But I'm going to call my map finished.